which realistically don't start a project unless you think there's money to be yeah. made. That would be uh, the next point, right? It's like we va need to validate if there is actually first money to be made and what is this kind of ceiling. If you've ever wanted to watch how a business is formed from inception all the way through the creation process and launching to customers, this is the one for you. This is the series. We're going to walk through how we found this idea, why we chose it. As we're building through this project, we're going to evaluate what features need to go in, what it needs to happen now, what needs to happen later, work through marketing this thing. For us, we've done B2B before, but we haven't actually done B2C. We're using Rails as the back end and front end. Usually we do Rails APIs with React front ends, but we're running Stimulus and Turbo all the way through. So we're learning that. So if you want to learn those things, if you've gotten a bit of JS fatigue, we'll take you for a ride. Also, I want to intro you. This is Daryl. Hello. He's the man behind the magic. He's working on this project with me. We'll start talking through the points of like, who is this for? Why do we think it needs to exist? Why should anyone care about this? So let's jump in. If you want to follow this project, we're posting a lot on Twitter. We're also, you can follow the actual building of it on our YouTube channel on Ken Grief. Yeah, so we're building this project for YouTube creators. These are creators that are putting out probably multiple videos per week. They're trying to manage them. You know, the scheduling of those videos, coming up with concepts, coming up with ideas, all those kind of things. And the way we found out about this problem is actually through Theo. So he streams a lot about software and all those kind of things like dev tooling. But he did this video on the open letter to Notion. Basically, at the moment, a lot of the creators are using Notion to do this. And it's a very powerful tool. It's very handy. It's very flexible. But the problem with that is when a tool's too flexible, it's not specific. All right. So to get set up by hard, you can get a template, you can buy a template, it becomes a little bit overwhelming, and it doesn't really do exactly what you want it to do. And so we went through this video with all the call outs, you know, what are the things that Notion is struggling at? And what are the things Notion will probably never fix? They're not built to be a YouTube project management tool. That's not what they're for. They're there for the masses and they need to try and reach as big of audience as possible. So that leaves a gap for us or for anyone. It's the ability to now go and build very hyper niche software that solves the problems. Why would we attack such a big company in project management? There's a, there's a million project management tools out there. You have Asana's, you have um, Basecamp's, your Notion's. But in the end of the day, they all kind of solve different problems. And the reason why we would attack this is to create a tool that's, like I said, hyper niche, and it's built around doing one job and doing one job really well. So that gives you a competitive advantage. It means we can put in things that other companies just wouldn't put in. We can code in platforms. We can create things like reference to things like YouTube or Instagram or Twitter because it's, it can be built into our platform because that's what we care about. We care about scheduling for creators. So we can then go and build tools directly for the creator that may not be useful to other people in, you know, for instance, Notion's ecosystem. If creators, YouTube creators are a small piece of that. They'd have enterprise customers that don't care about those things. And we can focus on the little pieces that are actually used rather than everything else. We have that advantage where we can hyper focus and not get spread thin. Coming back to the point is like, why does this tool exist? And what is the core use of this tool? This tool is for YouTube creators to manage content. And that is what we need to focus on. So when we get feature ideas or, or suggestions, we always have to come back to that and say, does this align with where we want to go? Yes or no? And we can throw that away. That's why we think building something specific is an important and it's actually an advantage. It's not so much competing as it is just doing the same thing in a different way. So you could look at it like we're competing, but actually we'll be looking to carve out a completely unique space that no one is really addressing well. And we, after seeing the Theo video, we did a lot more research into how YouTubers are planning their content. And it might be Trello, it might be Asana, it might be any of these tools. They all require a lot of configuration and manual processes and hacking how they work to try and work for the people. So that's where we see an opportunity to, you can actually address their needs. You're not gonna be competing with those people. You're not gonna be competing against the marketing budget of a Monday or a no addressing one specific problem. So while you're in the project management tool space, you're not necessarily competing with them at all. One of the 
things that's really important is from the beginning, we know exactly who our customer is. It's not vague. It's not like we know that our customer are YouTube creators, small subset of users, and we know exactly what they are. We know how they operate. We know what they produce. So we know the product. There are a lot of videos on their workflows. They'd like to talk about how they do their thing. So by, by choosing that customer, we actually have an advantage here because we are getting told what they want. They are showing their problems with their other tools. So we can address those things directly. So with the open letter to Notion that Theo did, he actually talks about the features that he wants them to build, features that come out with these guys, it's, it's all enterprise. It's like, those are the people paying the big money. Those are the people they want to focus on. For us, we can focus on exactly what they want. We can say, I want it to work like this. I want certain content to hide when I'm streaming. I want the ability to, you know, store certain things and settings and preferences. And those are all the things we can listen to build and build a tool that's exactly built for purpose. And that's because we know who our target customer is. That makes marketing easier. That makes finding your customers easier. You're like, you know, going direct to them, showing them the tool and then working with them for feedback and iterating. Another reason I think the niching down is really good. If you consider someone like Notion, if they were trying to address the use case of a specific YouTuber, don't just make it for that one person. They have to make it flexible enough to work for everyone. So by niching down, and you might be familiar with like user personas, people in mind that need to use it, you can do things just for them by limiting your audience. And you might think, oh, but there's not enough people to sell to. There's enough people to sell to, to sustain your business. And by picking just one type of user, you can develop things that you don't have to be as flexible in other areas that someone like Notion would have to do where they might need a team of 16 people to investigate calendar updates to make automatic automatically pushing calendar events forward because they have to consider everyone's use cases as opposed to just one niche use case of, which is a massive benefit if you are a small company and you don't have a lot of dev resources and even by them doing that and you know, if they take your feature and they're like yeah we want that feature and they can do it and they can implement it it just adds more configuration for the layman because a lot of people just use notion for taking note right in the end of the day so now you've got these crazy settings that you have to walk into and you're just like why why do i care about the calendar scheduling i don't care about that why do why are there settings for this how do i access the ability to turn on dark or light mode all these things that kind of just add up and how do i go into a stream mode what's a stream mode like could you just can't build some things into and we've experienced these things in, in big enterprise software so by building a real niche tool you have a very big competitive advantage we've found the idea that we want to work on we've basically identified our customer. What we normally do next is research. We never want to build something that there's, there's already 20 of these things and they're doing a great job. We just don't know of them. We don't want to build. That's trading a market already. We research the incident. So firstly, we look for tools. So we look for YouTube content management platforms. That's how we'd, we'd start. So we just first look for software that is similar. Right, so we kind of, com you call this competitor analysis, see if there's anything out there. First thing we identified was that there are a lot of maybe tools for YouTubers or social media posting, but not necessarily for content planning. And I think this comes back to people are already doing it in other project management tools. So no one's really taking on that space competitively just for YouTube. And the most obvious solutions for YouTubers are around title and thumbnail, AI description generation and script writing, and social media posting. Those are the obvious ones and there's lots of competitors in that space and it's not somewhere that you would immediately try and enter just based on the amount of competitors. Not that competitors being there is a bad thing, you can always find ways to be better than the competitors, but we notice that there is definitely a hole in the market and we have made the consideration that maybe the hole in the market is because there's no market there, but you've got to sort of weigh everything up and decide whether or not you think it's worth approaching and we sort of did after doing the research. Finding all these competing products that are around the same space proves that there's a validation that YouTubers spend money on their tooling because they are essentially businesses. They spend money on their tooling and these other softwares make a decent amount of money doing different pieces of the process. So I think there's probably money to be made, which realistically don't start a project unless you think there's money to be yeah, made. That would be at the next point, right? It's like we need to validate if there is actually first money to be made and what is this kind of ceiling? Is there money to be made but there's only three people that you can sell to we need to know that their addressable market is big enough to actually fund a business in the end of the day you want to build a business that's profitable we don't want to go out there and get vc funding and build a business that's not profitable to spend heaps of money on marketing but never make money we want to bootstrap this make profit and then reinvest those profits if we need to building all right so that's how we look at these things so if a content cr uh, creator is releasing more than two videos a week you can safely say there's some sort of planning that needs to go in there they would have an ideas to keep that funnel full they'd be needing to 
add ideas, coming up with constant ideas, like what are we what are we working on next to create a pipeline of videos? Because you can't just uh, do it off the cuff. It's very difficult. You know, even if you're doing one a week, there's a lot of effort that goes into creating a video. We look and we can identify that and we can see there's a lot of them. We believe YouTube as a platform is still growing and it's in a very big growth stage. It's gonna become a platform where people you know, look at really specific content. People wanna watch how do I farm chickens or you know, this could be anything. It's like, how, what kind of track? But there's so many niches in, on YouTube. So there's a whole bunch of creators. We identified should be what we think quite a big ceiling. Um, there's a lot of customers to sell to. So once we've identified idea, gone done competitor analysis, we've worked out if and actually make profit from this. We then start looking through, what does the tool need to do? What are the core functions of the tool? What we did is we looked at obviously Theo, he did a couple of videos, how he manages his content before. He talks about the open letter to Notion. And then you've got a whole bunch of things. Like in Twitter, we look out for people talking, block collaboration tools. So you can see there's like a problem that's been identified. It's like people are asking, what tools do you use to collaborate? So collaboration is a very important piece as you become bigger. You're not filming and editing and you know, doing all these things yourself and building the thumbnail. You have a team. So how do these people collaborate? That's important for us. We looked at Thomas Frank, all his Notion features. He's got something for YouTube as well. And then we work through kind of what are the, how are they using it and what are, the features that are missing. We look at those things and we kind of rank them and say, try and work out what is our minimum sellable product. Something we can actually charge money for. What is the minimum someone would pay? For? We probably have high standards of what a tool should be able to do before you can sell it. I know there's a lot of people out there that sell tiny tools for decent money. And then we've come from really complex, big tools. It's gonna to be a fair bit bigger than what you would normally see from what I'd call the indie hacker market on Twitter. We just, we couldn't find one small thing to target this space that really we thought was worth building. This is quite a bit bigger than that. Gonna go through the idea generation process into project management with your team through to publishing the stuff. We are going to have to keep it very limited. You can probably hear from all of our research, we're sort of deciding on who the product is for and who it's not for. So even within YouTube creators, there's going to be more sellability for people who are growing their team. Collaboration tools are more valuable. So while we aim to support anyone from a solo creator up to the bigger studios, we're going to have to find a middle ground where most of the features are centered around the people who we think are easier to sell to so that the product is sustainable long term. Yeah. At the moment, we're only be able to spend one day a week on this. So if you add all those days up, we'll probably be fitting this in a six week cycle. So we're still trying to keep it really constrained and then launch fast. And that's why we've chosen Rails. Even though we are adding more than what we think, like, oh, we're going to launch one little tool. We think the problem with that as well, I guess, is why we don't generally build those kind of things is if you can build a tool in a weekend, so can anyone else. But that's just, yep. that's the same. It's especially now in this landscape. Because we're so time limited, we don't want to spend time on something that could just become a feature of another product. That's probably the main consideration is if, you're, if your tool is small enough that it could just be added in by a competitor, we don't really want to spend the time putting time into developing that product. It doesn't seem worth it to us. Uh, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing is, we're not special as far as development goes. Anyone can go and build exactly what we're building here. I think all the magic is going to be in making the right choices around what to build, what not to build for the user and being focused in the right areas with the limited time we have. One of the benefits to doing YouTube, I think, is the marketing channels that's going to open up. So by producing content or a product that YouTubers use, they love talking about the tooling they're using to try and help future YouTubers. If we can get into that cycle where the leaders tell other YouTubers to use a tool, then some of the people who grow from those educators become leaders and they say the same thing again. We'll get a really good feedback cycle of customers coming in again and again and again without having to try and compete with marketing. So that is ClipFlow and we are hoping to have this done in the next couple of months. So if you have any questions, suggestions even, drop a comment below or reach out on Twitter. Links down below. Links down below and really excited about this project. It's been something that was kind of stumbled upon, but please comment, please like, please subscribe, follow us. We'll be releasing a lot of these videos as we build. So working through the different things as we kind of hit more interesting pieces. We're not going to film every single day of this one because it is a long one 
fun and there's a lot of mundane stuff which we have covered before but you know for, for instance the kanban board we make a video on that anything new that i'm learning share that with you the setup of the projects there and anytime we want to talk about something we'll release it here as well so we're already up to about 16 videos already so make sure you just jump on see how we actually take an idea and take it all the way through to building and then hopefully yeah in a couple of months we can come back and show talk you about real customers yeah talk about <laughs> revenue and real features that customers have suggested and how we um plan through that if you want us to do a video on anything specific if something's unclear you know it could be anything it's like how if you want us to dig deeper into how we find ideas we can do a full bit on that how do we choose them anything tell us what you want to what you want to see and we'll do that and just drop it in the comments or tag us in twitter and that should be everything catch you on the next one